the queen only has two jobs in the hive. She's not like the queen of England. She doesn't run the hive. She lays eggs all day. She can lay a thousand to three thousand eggs every day, all summer long. The other job she does is she produces what we call a pheromone. That's a special smell that the bees use to communicate with each other. And the queen's pheromone tells the workers in the hive that everything's all right. That the queen's here and that they should just keep doing whatever it is they do. The workers, they're all female, and they run the hive. They do all the work in the colony. There's about 50,000 bees in the colony. One of them is the queen. About 300 of the bees are boys. We call the boys drones. Here's one now. And the drones don't do much of anything. You can see it has great big eyes, a wide body. This is a boy bee. His job is to mate with the queen from another hive. Every afternoon he heads out, finds a spot to hang out with the guys, and hope that a good looking queen flies by. That's all he does. He doesn't even feed himself in the hive. The female workers feed the drones and they raise the babies, and they clean the house, and they process the honey and pollen when it comes back to the hive, and they store the food for winter, take care of the drones. The drones don't even take part in defending the colony. If somebody, if a predator comes to attack the colony, the drones even, don't even help out with that and they taste a little bit like chocolate. I don't actually eat them. He doesn't have a stinger. He doesn't have a stinger to take part in defending the colony. A honeybee's stinger uh, on the workers is, it's a, it's a modified organ. That's what, in a solitary bee, a bee that does everything for herself, that's the part that lays the eggs. But in honeybees, because the workers don't have to lay eggs, they can have a stinger instead of an, uh, an egg layer. Because the drones don't do anything in the hive, uh, they're only kept around when there's a chance for the hive to reproduce. So about the last week of August, the workers rise up, they kick all the drones out of the colony, and the drones die, and it's just the workers through the winter. This box has a queen in it, and all the eggs larva and pupa, the baby bees that we call brood. This is a feeder. If the bees don't have enough honey, I can feed them a little bit of sugar water that they can turn into honey just for their own food. There's eggs, larva, and pupa in this box. There's pollen that the workers feed to the babies. And there's honey that the bees are storing for winter. These don't make honey for beekeepers. Bees make honey because that's their food through the winter. Unlike bumblebees and wasps, the whole honeybee colony lives through the winter, and so they need a lot of food to make it through. What a beekeeper does is we trick the bees in the spring into thinking that springs come early. We feed them a little bit of sugar and a little bit of uh, a protein supplement so that they think flowers are blooming, they start raising babies, start making the hive bigger, and by the time flowers actually bloom, they're twice the size they need to be. Because they're so big, we have to give them extra space or they'll leave. We don't keep living conditions good, they'll leave. This is what we call a queen excluder. The bars on this are just far enough apart that a worker bee can squeeze through, but a queen can't. So the bottom box in the colony is where we have the queen, all the brood, the baby bees, and all the food that the colony needs to survive through winter. All of the pollen and honey that they're going to need to survive through winter goes in the bottom box, and the beekeeper doesn't take anything out of the bottom box. 
what we do is we put this queen excluder on top of the box to make sure the queen stays down there and all the babies stay down there. And we put another box on top. We give the hives some more space so they hang around. As much as we do good things for them, they're almost always ready to leave uh, should we get a little bit lax in our job. And in the top box, because only the workers can get through, the workers come up through and they store honey up here. The hive is way bigger than it needs to be, so they store a lot more honey than they're going to need to survive through winter. And all of that extra honey goes in the top box. This is a frame of honey that the bees have stored. Because this is extra honey, the bees don't need this to make it through winter. I can take this frame, I can extract the honey, and I can eat the honey, knowing that I'm not going to hurt the hive by doing it. Now you can imagine this is very slow. We have 1,500 colonies. It would take us all year just to get the bees out of the honey supers if we did it this way. So when we extract honey from our hives, we put the box up on a special stand we built, and we blow the bees out with a leaf blower. But we're not going to do that today because they get all upset. Today I'm just going to take a couple of frames out, and in a half an hour, in the room just to the side here, I'm going to show you how we get the honey out of the frames, and I'll even let you try some of the freshest honey you're ever going to taste. Thank you very much.